Now, for a start, to change something on the screen, let's make sure that we output a real question here. We got two questions here in this list of questions, and I want to start with my first question here at the beginning of the app, but once we press the button, and for the moment, it doesn't matter which button we pressed, I want to switch to that second element here. Now for that, let's first of all start by outputting the first element. So I don't want to hard code my question down there into this text widget, but instead I want to use the first element of my questions list. To do that, we first of all have to refer to questions. Questions is the name of the variable uh, by adding it here. But now questions is a list of strings and I only want to take the first string and output it. To do that, Dart gives us a syntax for accessing the different items in a list with their different indexes. Each item here has an index. The index starts at zero for the first item. That's important, not at one, but at zero. And we can access the different elements by their index. There are two ways of doing that. You can add a dot here after your variable names. And now since questions in the end holds a list, which is an object, this has quite a lot of methods which Dart gives us automatically because list is a default object built into Dart and it's a more complex object as you can clearly tell with a lot of built-in methods. Now we'll use some of these methods throughout the course. Here one method we could use is element add. And now here we could pass in an index which if you hover over that needs to be an integer and if that is zero for example you get access to the element at the index zero which is the first element. So if I do that and I save this, you see what's your favorite color here because what's your favorite color is the first element here and therefore it has the index zero. If I pass one in here, we would print what's your favorite any, whoops, any male should be the text here of course. If I pass two in here, which is uh, index two, then we actually get an error here, right? I get an error that if we scroll up, that we have an arrange error here, invalid value, not in range, uh, 0 to 1, so that's the range we have, and we try to use 2, and that's in the end I, the error I get here, because I try to access the element at an index which we don't have in here, because the index at the element 2 would be the third element in this array, and we only have 2. So that's one way of doing this, but there is a shorter way. Instead of using element at, you can add square brackets after the variable name and then enter your index number there. That's doing the exact same thing, but it's a bit shorter and therefore it's the syntax you typically use. This now accesses the first element in the questions list and therefore this, what's your favorite color question, and hence this is what we now see here. So that's nice. However, it would be nice if we could change that index which we're accessing dynamically when we press a button. To make that happen, we can add a new variable. Now, however, not inside of the build method here, because then it would essentially be reset and change every time build runs and actually Flutter executes build a couple of times. It always executes build when it needs to rebuild uh, the interface on the screen. Instead, I want to add it as a class-wide variable. So here inside my class, I can add a new variable at the top and that could be question index, which is zero initially. Now we could also replace var with int, but since I initialize it with zero, Dart is able to infer this and hence using var is a better practice. Now by adding this property here, so a class-wide variable is called a property as you learned, we can use it here in answer question. And I could take my question index and set it equal to one or simply to question index plus one to use the old value that's stored in question index and then add one to it. And then after this calculation is done, that's stored back into question index. So the old value of question index will be overwritten with the old value plus one. And I can remove answer chosen now. So we could update question index here and now here, when we output a question, instead of using zero, we could refer to question index here. So the index which we use to access an element in our questions list is set dynamically. It is zero initially, and we increment it to one after a question was answered. 
And right now, answer question is only connected to the first button. So when we press the first button, we should change question index and therefore we should also see our question change here to the second question, which is the one for our favorite animal. Let's also print question index here to see whether that works. If we save this, it should rebuild. You can always manually press that flash button here to do a hot reload, or if somehow your app got stuck, you do a hot restart to fully restart your app, which takes a tiny bit longer, but uh, make sure that you really rebuild your app with the latest piece of code. And now if I press answer one, seems to work. If I go back, I see one and two because I pressed it twice. But if I only press it once, let me rebuild this again. To really prove that this only executes once. So if I now press answer one, I see one here. So this works, but what you also see is that the text didn't change. It's still what's your favorite color. It did not change to what's your favorite animal. So what's wrong here? Do we have an error in our code? No, the problem is, and that's also kind of signaled here by the green squiggly lines, but that's a bit too cryptic. But the problem is in the end that we're trying to change some internal state of this widget. And for that, of course, we need to understand what state is and then we'll understand what the remedy is. 